Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and today's video where fellow storytellers Alex, Elizabeth and Mike will take this data table and transform it into something meaningful using three different scenarios. So let's jump straight into our first scenario where Alex will take us through how we can communicate to the general public. So when we're communicating data to the general public, it becomes really important to think about simplicity and engagement. Now this is certainly true for all different scenarios, but even more so here, because if we can imagine, maybe we're on a marketing team, right? And we're trying to use these survey results to get to our consumers. Consumers, people like you and me, we are bombarded with messaging and distractions every single day. So it becomes even more important to make sure that our primary point is easy to decipher and that it's communicated in a way that's visually interesting so we don't just scan over it. So let's actually come back to our original table for a moment. When we look at this, we can see this table, it's pretty detailed, right? We asked folks a number of questions here. We quantified their responses between these two brands. We even got some letters in here indicating significant difference. Also have some survey details. We've got our sample size, our significance uh, level. This is gonna be a little bit too technical, a little bit too much detail for such a general audience. So let's actually take a step back from data, take a step back from a table or the chart type that we might use and just get really clear and concise on what's the simple message we wanna communicate in its most basic form, All right? So if we put that into a sentence, it's just that we want our consumers to know that Creamery Strawberry is actually the preferred brand over Dairy Girl Strawberry. So this is a simple message. I will argue with you that this is not exactly visually interesting to look at. So when it comes to how we might add in that visual interest, we can always turn to branding. Now, I don't have branding or a style guide to use for this specific data, but that's the fun part because I get to actually create that for this data. So I'll give you some insight into the behind the scenes of how I actually came up with my theme here. So I just did a quick Google search, came across this uh, image, and I loved it. Uh, I liked that there were strawberries in there. I thought that was sort of a nice sensory appeal. And I wanted to see if there was a way that I could work a strawberry into a chart, sort of a challenge for me. Also liked the colors that were on this. I thought they were fun and exciting, a little bit summery. Uh, but I also liked that there was sufficient contrast between these colors. So that's an important decision when it comes to adding color into my charts. So I actually decided to build a color theme off of this image. And there are a couple ways that you can actually go about doing that. And certainly manually select and match colors independently, or you could use uh, some software. So I just used an online free work resource called Adobe Color. Nice thing about that is it lets you upload your image and then it pulls out the colors themselves. Also it shares the behind the scenes of the actual color codes. So that can make it a little bit easier to upload into your tool. Third thing I liked about this image is the font. So the way that strawberry was written with this sort of cursive -y font, just thought that was a little bit fun and I could maybe use that to distinguish my two brands. So let's actually take a look at my really simple sentence by just layering in color and font, I'm looking at the overall feel that we now have. So certainly more interesting to look at, but we can imagine that we would be even more persuasive if we supported this message with some data. Let our consumers know that Creamery Strawberry is in fact the preferred brand. In fact, four out of five ice cream lovers prefer Creamery Strawberry's flavor over Dairy Girl Strawberry. You can see that strong call to action also included. So we've got our simple data-driven message. And it, when it comes to now thinking about engagement, we can do a very quick trick. We can simply invert these colors. This is definitely more eye-catching to look at. You can imagine something like this might be used uh, in social media. Maybe it's an advertisement on a website. So having a really strong, bold colored background like this is going to help make sure that our consumers see this and they don't scan over our message. So that's one way that I might show this data to the general public, but you can imagine if I wanted to be even more detailed, maybe use some of the values from that original data table, I might maybe not choose a table, right? Maybe I might visualize it in a more novel chart, something like a dot plot. 
benefit of using a novel chart like this is that it's just simply less familiar. And so when you have a less familiar chart, sort of get that newness factor, that interest that can engage your audience. Anytime you use a novel chart like this, you want to be mindful, though, that you're not sacrificing clarity. So it's really important to make sure that you have strong takeaways, solid labeling, you're using simple, accessible language. But also go ahead and layer in some brand colors, uh, some of the color themes that we chose, being thoughtful about the intensity that we use so that our consumers focus on creamery strawberry. And I kept coming back to this idea, really liked this idea of incorporating strawberries. So I thought to myself, what if instead of using dots, I just used berries themselves? So added some berries, layered in some fonts. And if I was going to use something like this to communicate to my consumers, I'd certainly take it that next level, using consistent branding, adding in a logo, having a strong call to action, so that my consumers, the general public, knows that creamy strawberry has the best flavor. They loved it, uh, and they can taste it themselves by claiming their free sample. I have a bit of a craving for strawberries after watching that, but let's jump straight into our next scenario where Elizabeth will take us through this data set, but applying it to some all too common constraints. This is a scenario that I became very familiar with in my own analytical career prior to working with storytelling with data. I spent quite a bit of time at a number of different large organizations. And if you're like me and you've ever worked in a living, breathing organization, you can relate to the fact that, you know, we might want to have all the time in the world, but time constraints are very, very real. So to uh, talk about how we might overcome that, I broke this into two different ways, uh, time constraints, and then we'll look secondly at what we can do at audience constraints. So imagine you're in the situation where your manager calls you all of a sudden and says, I've been called into a very early meeting and I need a slide from you in 15 minutes. So let's take a look back at our original table and start to think about if we only have a few minutes to make changes, what are some things we can do to really make sure that the interesting things about this data stand out? And I'll concentrate the two changes that I'm making on the use of color and the use of words. In fact, generally speaking, these two things are the most effective things we can likely do to make our visuals make more sense. Um, first, on the topic of color, this is a very brute force trick that I used to utilize when I was communicating with PowerPoint, and that is transparent white boxes. So if you notice, if I put a white text box on this slide and change the transparency of it, I can make certain things stand out and de-emphasize things to the back. So then I'll also want to think about not only utilizing, utilizing transparent white boxes, but using my title bar more effectively. Um, specifically actually describing what's happening with their data. So let's assume we want our audience to focus on the overall score. If I title my slide as such, that tells you what to look for when you get to the data at the bottom. And in fact, I may want to even take the additional opportunity to provide more words in the form of annotations. So not just put data out there and expect my audience to know what to do with it, but actually prompt them to be thinking about next steps. So let's have a discussion. What are some steps we can take to highlight these in our marketing efforts? Let's take a look now at a second very common type of constraint, which is audience constraints. Let's assume we're in the situation where your audience is used to seeing this data in a table and you don't have the leeway to make the changes that you want to. So how can we overcome those constraints and still communicate effectively? Let's take a look now at how some minor changes can have major impact when we have to utilize tables. So the first change I'll make is going to look familiar because we've actually talked about it. It's reducing the amount of color that we show. So notice when I take away the color completely, then I can start to be strategic in a few steps about where I can add it back in. So I'm a big fan of any time I'm working with tabular data, just start with everything gray and have nothing emphasized because then I can start to think about how can I make the data itself stand out more. I'm also gonna make a couple other minor changes here that are gonna have major impact. So let's turn our attention to the column of our ice cream attributes. And you'll notice how it's currently left aligned. If I right align that column instead, now I've created clean alignment so it's easier for my eyes to scan down these columns and make sense of what I'm seeing. 
Now, when I, when I made this change, I realized, wow, the word liking is repeated 11 different times on the slide. Uh, that's a very minor thing, but we have to realize that every single thing we put on our slides takes brain power to process. So I want to be really thoughtful around every single thing that I put on that page and making sure that it adds enough value to make up for its presence. For me, the word liking repeated 11 times doesn't do that. So let's actually take that word out and just show the overall attribute. So now we can start to think about how do we make the interesting things stand out if we have to use tabular data. One way we can do that is think about the manner in which the data is sorted. So currently it's sorted. Actually, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how it's sorted. So let's be more thoughtful and strategic around how we sort it. If I sort this descending, ranging from the highest to the lowest, then we could start to think about what is it we want our audience to focus on. We could use color. Uh, to focus attention on the fact that maybe it's appearance, that that's going to be the interesting thing to our audience, right? The, we're actually, you know, while it's the highest, we're on parity with our competitor. Or perhaps there's a completely different takeaway from this, and that is related to the statistical significance um, and the fact that we score different on these six attributes that you see right here. Or perhaps there's a completely different takeaway, and that is the overall score and the fact that regardless of the different attributes, we are performing our comp competition overall. And this is a good story. On the topic of words, we can still take the opportunity to add additional annotations on our slide to get our audience thinking about next steps. So check out the difference um, in where we started, right? So we can see the example here of when we're faced with constraints, whether it's time constraints or audience constraints, our use of color and our use of words will go a very long way in not just putting data out there and expecting our audience to know what to do with it, but rather getting a conversation started, which is what we want. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, then give that like button a tap. But now let's go straight into our third scenario where Mike is looking to meet the expectations of his very demanding boss. So I have to focus on the key message because my impatient executive just needs to know what he needs to know. He doesn't want to be bothered with the charts or the backstory or anything else. Just get me the key message. So in order for me to do that effectively, I have to figure out first what the key message is. So I need to understand this data. And I had a hard time figuring out from the original table what it was. So like uh, Alex and Elizabeth, I started by cleaning up the table. And when I looked at how the table was sorted, there was something interesting about it to me. Even though in the table, they're all presented as being equally weighted, all of these 11 categories, it seemed to me that there was an overall category, and then there were categories for texture and appearance and flavor. And then in some cases, there were even subcategories. So I decided to add some very, very subtle uh, row dividers in there to help me visualize for myself that there was a difference among these categories and that the subcategories being rated higher maybe wasn't as important as the overall value being rated higher. Also, as Elizabeth pointed out, there's a lot of repeated words here. I noticed liking 11 times. I've got strawberry twice. That is 10 and one time too many, respectively. So I'm going to get rid of those, and I'm going to actually move strawberry into the title of my chart so that it's the strawberry ice cream focus group results. Next, I'm going to figure out what these letters mean, these A's and B's that are next to the numbers. And it seems like they're referencing the differences in the scores that were significant. So if those are the only scores we care about, I might want to de-emphasize the other scores. And in doing so, by making them very faded out gray, I'm noticing that the significant differences were in all of the flavor categories and in the overall category. And it was the texture and appearance categories that weren't that important. I could even take out those unimportant categories, uh, but at least now, I'm not going to present this table as my final product to my inpatient exec. At least I know what the analysis is. Since the analysis now is clear to me, now I have to figure out what visual is going to show this the most intuitively. So like most of you, I decided to consider using a bar chart. So I did the bar chart to show what the scores were for the creamery and the bar chart to show what the scores were for Dairy Girl. And this is great if I'm trying to compare the scores within each of the two brands. But unfortunately, it doesn't help me to compare the scores against the two brands within each category. And that's actually what I want to do. 
So in this case, I'm going to want to put those bars very close together. And of course, unfortunately, that makes them very thin because now I'm trying to show 22 bars running horizontally across the screen. In fact, what I really want to do is emphasize this key takeaway, which is that the creamery strawberry ice cream is beating its competition. It's beating Dairy Girl. So I could put these lines in to show as a reference what Dairy Girl's scores were and how I'm always beating the competition when I'm the creamery. I could make those bars a little bit uh, more prominent by adding gray in the background. I could put gray in the foreground so it looks like the creamery is shooting past the Dairy Girl. Or I could block out entirely everything that the Dairy Girl uh, score was so that you're only seeing the difference in the bar chart. But guess what? I don't actually like bar charts for this data because this is a scale that goes from one to nine. And I have a real hard time using bar charts for anything that doesn't start at zero. And by the way, this is just a scale on a number line. It doesn't actually encode quantity in any way. So that's another reason why I'm not thrilled about using a bar chart here. I decided to use, instead of a bar chart, a slope graph. Slope graphs are going to let us compare rises and falls, and they let us compare two different uh, competitors uh, on the same scores against one another. So I can have Dairy Girl on one side, Creamery on the other side, and the slopes of the lines moving up from Dairy Girl to Creamery on each of these attributes uh, tells me that we are highly ranked compared to our competition. When I put a, hot, uh, a thicker and more bold line, you can see those uh, rises even more clearly. And you can see that the Creamery was rated higher than Dairy Girl, significantly so across all of these categories, wherever there was a notable difference. So now that I know how to show this data, let's tell the boss. If I'm presenting live, I know my boss is busy. He's a big, bombastic guy. He likes bold strokes. So I can say, hey, boss, do you know how many times Dairy Girl beat Creamery in this taste test? I can tell him zero times. Dairy Girl was never rated higher than us on any of the categories. So let's look into it a little bit more. There were 11 categories we tested. We were higher than them in 10 of 11, and we tied on the 11th. There were some that we were close by and there wasn't a significant statistical difference between these two, but guess what? We tied or beat them in those categories as well. It was on overall and flavor where there was this significant difference between the Creamery's ratings and Dairy Girl's ratings. Flavor, overall flavor, overall liking, we were way ahead in all of these. So our formulation of strawberry is preferred by our focus group and we should definitely market this one because there's a strong taste preference that consumers have over our main competition. And if I can't present it live to my inpatient executive, I would still include all of this data as annotation, but I would use bold text, big text, and bright color to make sure that he doesn't miss the key takeaway, which is that testers overwhelmingly prefer the creamery over its competition. A very simple data table there transformed many different ways using those three different scenarios. If you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to give the like button a tap. And if you're interested in seeing content from us going forwards, then also hit that subscribe and notification bell as well. We release videos weekly here covering all manner of things from makeovers to tutorials and other design related tips and tricks as well. So until next time, thanks for watching.